Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Barbecue Bourbon and Blues. I'm your host, Kali Word, along with my sidekick. Um, Skip Word, the best bourbon toastmaster ever. <laughs> yes, he is. Well, yes, he is. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about um, tips to make your cookouts uh, as stress-free and trouble-free as possible. All right? So, tip number one is for you to have a plan. All right, know how many guests you're going to have, what you're cooking. Um, you know, if anybody has peanut allergies or whatnot, you want to make sure you can take care of that. So, you know, I don't, depending on what on what you're doing, all at your fish fry, at, at your cookouts and fish fries. Um, so, like I said, first one is to have a plan. I don't know what barbecue or cookouts you ever been to or fish fry because we never asked about it about peanut and allergies. If, you, <laughs> if he go down, he go down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And and one more thing as far as your plan goes, man, you know how many guests you're having. Now, if you know that Cousin Peanut can eat an entire slab of ribs, then you need to account for that when you, you know, when you purchasing your stuff and get him a slab of ribs for himself. You talking about the whole slab? Yeah, the whole slab. Not the St. Louis cut, but the, he want the slab. If you know he can eat the whole spare rib, the slab. Not the, Even St. Louis cut is, is still a slab. If he can eat a whole one by himself, you need to account for that. So you, you want to make sure that you, you take care of that, all right? All right. All right. Tip number two it's the store run. This is one of the most important tips that it is, all right? So the, on the store run, usually what I do is I start preparing days before. I write down everything that I could possibly think of that I might need, you know, a couple days out. And then I start, you know, filling in the blanks, looking at it, making sure I got everything together, you know, because it's nothing worse nothing worse than getting to you know it's the day of the cookout and you asking people to go to the store for you yeah because i'm just not gonna take that ride i'm gonna get mad first of all where i'm from you send the women on the store run they already gonna have the list prepared all you got to do is oh, cooking up yeah and then and you want to <laughs> you want <laughs> the you women wanna, do the store run man. you want to make sure well not with the meat though so when you <laughs> When you're doing, when you're making your store run and you go to your butcher or your grocery store, wherever you may go, you want to get the best available meat possible. You don't want to get, let's say, here in Tennessee, we have the pig five. Yeah, you don't want that pig five meat, man. Unless you just have to do it, you want to avoid that. You pick wanna... five, pick five cookouts is just reserved for the fellas when it's very spur of the moment. You like, we gonna throw it on the grill and, and drink a few brews really quick not a uh, planned out barbecue. That's right, that's right. The next tip, tip number three, is the fuel, all right? You wanna make sure you have the adequate amount of charcoal for or wood, or, you know, pellets. I hate to say it, yeah, pellets, wood pellets, or like I said, I hate to say it, or gas. If you're a gas griller, nothing wrong with it. I just prefer wood or charcoal but you want to make sure you have the adequate amount of wood or charcoal for your cookout because you don't want to get out here and start cooking and then the next thing you know your fire is down and you don't have you can't get it back up okay so you don't you don't want that you good agree, with that yeah, one? i agree i agree with that all right tip number four before you start you need to make sure your grill is clean. Grill grates, you want all of that stuff off of there as much as you can get, get your grill grates clean, okay? So you don't want anything sticking or burning. If it's on there, that's gonna be the flavor you're gonna get. You're gonna get some burnt up. Man, that's called seasoning. And the fire burn, whatever, still hanging off on it, off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one thing to season, season your grill grates, it's another thing to have stuff that you burnt up and it's just sitting on the top of the grill grate because you you done mess some stuff up and you just keep on adding stuff to it. You gonna have some burnt some burnt stuff on your on your grill and you do not want that. All right. The next tip, 
make sure you know the internal temps of the food you're cooking because there's nothing a, another bad thing is to serve your guest raw food you don't want to serve them raw food at all so you want to make sure you know the internal temps of your food okay now you could go out and you could get you one of these it's a, it's a meat thermometer, okay? This is a little one of the little handy dandy ones that I have, that I have out for this show right here today. This one right here, even if it gets dark, it lights up and I can check the internal temp of my food, okay? Well, man, you, you don't have to waste your time getting one of those internal temp thermometers. Well, I'm from, we just run it in our, we break a piece off, put it in our mouth and, and move it. If it's hot, you go, you just gonna do the reverse. <laughs> it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do it. So that's how you do it. So he's he, ready. <laughs> so he's gonna do the reverse blow, whether he likes it or not. Now, you look, I, I only know one person that ate some raw food and said it was good. <laughs> it was at a cookout we was having for the fellas. We had just put some stuff on, and here he come. He want to take him. He come around the corner with a piece, tearing it off, lighting into it. And it was a piece of chicken, too. And then he didn't get sick. Yeah, he but did. We had sit the, sit the chicken on five minutes, and he came, oh, it's ready. He was ready to eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he did that. And then he made it through. All right. Next thing. If your meat is frozen, if you buy it from the butcher or the grocery store and it's frozen, make sure you have proper time to unthaw your meat, all right? It takes usually takes a couple of days of, you know, I put it in the fridge, I get it, put it in the fridge, let it start unthawing. I, I usually start about three or four days out and I let it unthaw. Worst case scenario is, is getting it and putting it in the sink with, with some water and, you know, letting it thaw out that way. So you gotta let it thaw out three, four days before. When you, where, where do you have your meat frozen at? Uh, Alaska, Antarctica, something take three days to, to thaw it out? Uh, yeah, yeah, sometimes, you know, the bigger cuts of meat, it takes it a while to thaw. So you want it to be completely thawed out uh, or, you know, as close to thaw as you can get it, I guess. And if you don't have the time to do that, like I said, you can put it, somewhere in a with some with some water some lukewarm water or cold water as they say and uh room temperature water and let it unthaw preferably just get fresh meat from the start preferably get fresh meat from the start all right so the next tip is for you to the seasoning process now this is a very important process as well now you want to season your meat you know if you know your guests can't handle hot or extremely spicy, you don't want it to be extremely spicy. Now, you could have some to the side that you're going to make extremely spicy for the for the hot seekers, but make sure you have the proper amount of food for your guests seasoned up properly. I agree with you on that. You that's agree true. with me on that? Yeah, that's true. All right. Next. Uh, next. Make sure your grill is up to temp. It's got to be to the correct temperature before you put your meat on there. Now, me personally, I do a couple of things when it comes to this, all right? So I get my I get my grill started, and I'm bringing it up to temp, getting it to the temp I need. And I'm also letting my cuts of meat get up to room temperature while I'm doing all of this. I'm, I'm letting it get up to room temperature because if you get your meats up to room temperature it makes for a more uh even cook and it's and it, it doesn't take as long it's better it's better that way okay well i'm waiting for the grill to get up to temp i'm making sure my beer is ice cold i make sure it's up to temp <laughs> we got it in the freezer we got it in the cooler <laughs> and i'm drinking during the preheat up time but you drinking during the preheat Doing the cool down, he's he's drinking. With, with, if it's a cookout day, and you know he's there, have your drinks ready. Cause soon as his eyes pop open, it's gonna be on, on it. Yeah, it's gonna be on at that point. So you gotta make sure you be able to take it, have his check ready if he's gonna be helping you. Right. You know, just like you gotta account for that slab of ribs peanuts gonna eat. Make sure you have about 
a case of beer or, or, or a couple of, uh, as we used to call them back in the day, fifths of liquor. Because <laughs> so, it count for me. He said a couple of fifths, not just one. All right. Now, next tip is, please, when you, when you get your meat on and it's going, do not lift the lid. If you have it at the proper temp, you're going to be just fine. Don't lift the lid. Keep lifting it up and down while you're cooking because you're losing heat. And everybody knows the old saying on, when, you, when you're barbecuing or smoking meat. If you're looking, you ain't cooking. All right? That's, that's what I was taught, and that's the tip that I'm telling you right now. What do you, what do you think, man? Well, I agree with you on that, but if you're homeboys or, or somebody come on, you all, you always want to raise and be like, boy, look at this here right here. I got this right. <laughs> then close it back down. Give them a sneak peek. But it, it, again, if you're looking, you're not cooking. All right? So all those sneak peeks you're giving, you slowing your cook process down. Now, you done went from a four-hour cook or a five-hour cook to a nine-hour cook because you want to keep on lifting up Showing everybody to come what you're cooking. Well, don't man, sometimes that's good because if you cook it, they eat and run. You don't want that. Well, that's that's true. That's true. I can see that. But you know, you, you tell them to come before the meat is ready. If that's the case, <laughs> all right. And allow yourself proper time to, for your meat to rest. All right. Now I've I've covered this. I said something about internal temps and meat thermometers before. But please, y'all, make sure y'all go out and get a handy meat thermometer. You can buy a cheap one from Walmart or Amazon for about $9. You can spend as much as you want. You can go up to $100, $150 on it if you want to. I have several different kinds. I just brought this one out because it's the easiest one uh, to bring out. So you want to make sure you have this so you can... Probe your meat, make sure the cook is right. All right? Now, the last and the final tip might be for you, man. Oh, man, what's that? People, please don't get drunk while you're cooking and forget you got meat on the grill. Next thing you know, you just eating hot dogs and hamburgers because you done burnt up all the good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you don't want to do that, man. Just, you know. Ease your way into it, have you a beer too, make sure the cook is done, and then you can partake and have a good time. But make sure that food is right, y'all. Don't don't be ruining a family cookout, a family reunion, or a cookout for your friends, cause you done been on the on the sauce and now you falling over to you and fell asleep and your meat done burnt up. Man, you always had that one ump to have on the uh, Easter suit, the uh, Rayon suit with the, with the sandals. He drinking all day. He got a paint while he drinking and grilling. He ain't never burnt up nothing. Well, that's him. That's because he's seasoned, man. If you if you see somebody dressed like that, in a, if it's 9,900 degrees outside, and, and got they, a got, towel. they he got a towel on his shoulder, and uh, one of the uh, Kangos on his head, and a silk suit with some thick and thins and with the sandals on. And don't have no grease spots on him from flipping the weed or nothing. No, don't mess with him because he knows exactly what he's doing, man. Right. Leave him alone. Let him do his thing. Now, if you're going to pass the grill off to him, you got to let him know because he might get twisted too. <laughs> it, won't be as, it might not be as burnt as what you're going to do. But if he, if he get a little twisted, he might sit down and forget too. So you might want to tell him from the jump. Slow that, down. That slow down. It's a you marathon, know I mean? not a sprint. Yeah, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And these are just a few of the tips that I could give you about having a successful cookout. I have more, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to leave it at those. And uh, Well, I always got some more tips, too. But let me add these few tips, too. Okay, right? but hold on, though. Before you do that, let me get y'all, let me tell y'all, make sure you subscribe comment and like these videos and share them with your friends all right because we get you know we're doing these videos for you guys and you know that's what we like to do now next i want to give a shout out i want to give a huge shout out to my homeboy Derek allison for hooking us up with these pappy van winkle cigars okay now i'm not gonna smoke it today i'm away for the 
for the Pappy episode that we gonna do at some point soon. Yeah. And we'll pair these with, with the Pappy, with the Pappy van. van. We can go. Yeah, we can do that. And then we'll we'll uh, have a good cook for you that day. But thank you again, Derek. Appreciate for, it, man. That was real nice. Up. Thank you. With these Pappy Van Winkle cigars. And so now we're going to move on to my tips for a successful cookout. Number one, if you bring cheap liquor, don't reach for the premium liquor. So that means no LTD. I can't bring last two dollars. You can't bring it. You can drink it all day. Don't reach for the... Uh, I just Larceny want... or Four Roses or Basil Hayes and Wellers or, or Blattens. So Willet. Yeah, you, you can't. I'm you... bringing LTD and I'm reaching for the Willet. I'm just telling y'all right now. You I'm going to ask them what. You can't do that, man. You got to, you, you you bring well liquor, that's what you're you going to drink well because you're going to drink all that well liquor that, they, that you brought. All right. All right. All right. I agree with you on that one. All, all right. right. What else you got? Number two, there's a difference in the meat. Kids, Hamburgers, hot dogs, drumsticks, maybe some wings every now and then. But my the kid, big meat, my kid eat thighs. But the big meat, thighs, breast, that, that's for adults. But my kid eat thighs. He can't have a thigh. You know, hamburger and hot dogs. You know what? You know what it was. How we were growing when we were growing up, we couldn't reach for a piece of chicken unless it was a drumstick. Yeah, that's true. At a cookout, that's true. <laughs> you get thumped. Or real. Yeah, they like, thump you on the hill. <laughs> They'll throw you on the back man, of your head, man, smack out. you on the head. Hamburger, hot dog. And the blue cooler. With them Pepsi's in. <laughs> or double cola. Or the juice. Or the juice, yeah. yeah. The, the little quarter juice. Yeah, we had the little quarter juice. Number three. Um, no store runs, too. We didn't cover that in the first one, but I'm talking about you bringing your kids over, and all of a sudden, hey, man, I got to run to the store, and then you gone for about two, three hours, and your little bad kids running around. Uh, tearing up stuff. They, you know, when you get back, they might be duct taped to the seat or they might get this switch or the belt. Well, what if they, you know, what if it's the 4th of July and they got all their fireworks and stuff with them? One of them might get burnt. I'm not helping them. Man, that's low down, man. That's low down. But that's about all I got for you on those, on those tips, man. You just got three? Just three. Well, I got more, but, you know, that might have to come on another uh, episode. All right, well... We gonna, you know, for the sake of time, we we gave you these tips to help you on your next barbecue. Now, like I said, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment to the videos, and you know, we'll we'll uh comment back, and please let us know if you want to see us uh cook something. You know, if you if it's a, a type of meat that you struggle with. Just let us know, and we're trying to we'll, we'll get it on the show for you. All right, all right. Thank you for tuning in again to Barbecue Bourbon and Blues with the Word Brothers. We out.